but of course I think with a completely dry track at the moment BMW do appear to have the upper hand both Nissan and to an even greater extent Ford struggling for grip with their front wheel drive cars because we've got rear wheel drive cars at the BMWs four wheel drive cars at the Audis the Nissans and the Fords are rear wheel uh, are front wheel drive but next year the Ford Mondeos will I am told be four wheel drive but now 14 laps to come up of course they dive down into that fantastic Eau Rouge corner and then up to Radion and then the long run then to Lake Coombe and then the new part of the circuit there we see Han Stuck and a little bit of breakup on the uh, in-car camera green flag is waved it'll just be seconds now engines revving the lights are red the lights go to green and they are off and who makes the best start well BMW has certainly all got away well one of the uh, Nissan certainly making quite a good start I think that was Capelli and look at that Audi diving through into second place tremendous start there from Frank Vila I'm pretty sure that is Vila all these cars have little color markings on them Frank Vila has yellow markings on the front of his car but it is definitely in the lead Johnny Chicotto and uh, locking up there and it's spinners and all sorts of dramas and wheels knocked off and out of the action goes Marcus Osterreich no it's Bootsen it's Thierry Bootsen and that car well damaged Thierry Bootsen well a very short race for him the former three times Grand Prix winner and Bootsen still in the car so this race starting with a major incident Bootsen walks away definitely not very impressed couldn't see at the back of the pack exactly what happened there being collected by one of the back markers so an exciting start and uh, BMWs and that's it Emanuele Pirro there in the number five car and uh, in fact it's Alex Bergstahler who is leading Bergstahler is leading from uh, Chicotto and then we have Frank Bieler now joining the old circuit again coming up towards the end of this uh, first seven kilometer lap and let's try and see what happened in the back of the pack Thierry Bootsen went right sizing across the whole field it looks as if he had a tap from behind into the barrier very hard and also collecting uh, a back marker and uh, that looked to me as if it could have been Yolanda Sura but it, yes I think it was Yolanda Sura in fact it wasn't it was Peter Cox so at the end then of the first lap they go around La Source and Alfred Hager told me we might just kiss the barrier said as we come out of there but uh, Bert Stahler leading from Chicotto Piro in third place then it's Alfred Hager then Ravaglia then Bieler then Bartels then Stuck then Capello then Bernhardt then Capelli then Heisman then Osterreich who was obviously held up for, for that incident then Panchers and then Yolanda Sura and then uh, Hager and see yellow flags waving madly the cars being slowed right down that of course will bunch everybody up you saw the marshal there from the in-car camera and now our hand stuck going by and very nearly touching that Nissan well there's the look out of the back window and the camera being uh, rotated by remote control clever stuff these days but the big surprise is that Alec Bergstahler is leading this race you just see the little blue flashes on his car Johnny Chicotto in second place then Emanuele Pirro and then after him we have Alfred Hager I think there's no question about it that Mark Sura the BMW competition chief 
uh, the former Grand Prix racer, will at some stage in the game give instructions over the radio to Alex Bergstahler to let Johnny Chicotto past him. But right now, he's uh, enjoying the glory of leading this race, the first time he's led a round of the German Touring Car Cup. Like a number of the other people in this race, he was uh, dicing it out at Enna in Italy last weekend, but he actually finished sixth in a race run by the Alfa Romeo of uh, Tamburini, with Johnny Chicotto finishing second. BMW also in the running there in that particular championship. BMW, of course, racing all over the world, also competing in the Japanese uh, championship. In the British championship were the Schnitzer team, which uh, is racing at Silverstone today, the penultimate round of that uh, series. I understand that Tim Harvey in the Renault is on pole position there at Silverstone. So, Emanuele Pirro seeing what he can do about the BMW. Johnny Chicotto goes through. Alex Bergstahler dutifully uh, gives him plenty of room. And so, Johnny Chicotto leads at the end of the second lap. In second place then, Alex Bergstahler. In third place, keeping a very close watching brief is Emanuele Pirro. And they have already pulled away from Alfred, ha Alfred Hager and Roberto Ravaglia who, as you heard saying earlier, is not used to this particular BMW or to the tyres. At the start of uh, the third lap, the gap was 0.26. It looks much closer than that as the Audi goes through. So now we have a really charging drive from Emanuele Pirro, former Grand Prix driver. So Bergstahl has gone from first back to third and without question in these particular conditions dry but overcast there is a, a pretty close contest between the best of the BMWs and the best of the Audis. And there you see the second group with the further two BMWs of Hager and Ravaglia and no doubt about it uh, Bergstahl wants to get past that Audi again down the very difficult section the new part of the track which they built so much in the aspect of of the old what was it 12 12 kilometer circuit I did a couple of laps around here uh, in the dust last night and it really does put your heart in your mouth going down those uh, sweeping section because uh, there are some very steep, steep declines down there and the corners just seem to go on and on and they follow each other in a, a very difficult and not very rhythmic way. You really have to be very, very accurate with the apexes. You have to be on exactly the right part of the road. Uh, so Bergstahler tries down the inside, locks up and he's going to go. Oh, Bergstahler making a big mistake. Goes across the grass and uh, will drop, well, he's only dropped one place but Bergstahler too late onto the brakes and so that gives a bit of a cushion to Emanuele Pirro and it also gives a cushion to, to Chicotto with uh, still plenty of action and a lot of shuffling there between the uh, best of the BMWs and Audis but very definitely Johnny Chicotto in the lead Pirro is second in all that nonsense uh, Alfred Hager moved up to third place Frank Vila is now fourth, Ravaglia is fifth, Bergstahler is sixth, Bartels in the best of the Nissans is seventh, followed by Capello and Stuck as we see this all in slow motion. Pretty obvious what happened. And he only just missed those tyres too. There may be a 10 second penalty for that shortcut. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Alex Bergstahler having led this race early on, the tall young German getting his big chance this year being drafted into the team and there we see but Ravaglia's bonnet flapping but Frank Bieler the championship leader still in fourth spot Frank Bieler does actually have a chance of clinching the title here today at Spa but only if 
Johnny Chicotto and Emmanuel Piro both fail to finish and he, Fila, wins the race. It doesn't look very likely at the moment, but let's just recap then on this lap number four. Chicotto leads, Piro is second, Hager is third and Bieler is fourth as the action continues all down the field. <laughs> Back at Spa, in your picture there, Michael Bartels. But we go to the bus stop, Chicane, to catch the leads of the pack. And, uh, well, an accident there. Well, not an accident, a mistake, I should say, from Frank Beeler. Beeler just uh, popping in too close and scattering those tyres. Frank Beeler really trying hard. This big train of cars battling over four, fifth, sixth, seventh positions. Michael Bartels said there, very much in that scrap now. The leading three, crossing the start-finish line for the fourth time. Chicotto, with almost two seconds lead now over Pirro, Hager and Biela. Here's that incident, the chicane. You see there, those tyres scattered. Frank Beeler just taking it a little bit too close and the tyre wall now being rebuilt by the efficient uh, Belgian marshals. Well, Frank Beeler, you don't usually see too many mistakes from him. He's a driver that uh, is smooth and that's why he gets so much out of this car. Frank Beeler, former DTM champion, just turned 30 and uh, certainly one of the best touring car drivers around. So, Johnny Chicotto still leads. Chicotto, the winner at Zolder and Salzburg, and third at uh, Zambort uh, and the Ostreich Ring. Beeler, of course, having won at Arvis, Wunstorf and Zandvoort. And Alfred Hager having won it uh, in Austria at the Ostreich Ring. So, at the front, uh, they've stretched out a little bit. Uh, Chicotto with that two-second buffer over this man, Emanuele Pirro. Charismatic Italian. Quite a lot of Formula One history behind him. And then here is this uh, battle. Three cars now in fourth, fifth and sixth places. Bieler, Bergstahler after that uh, incident. And uh, also uh, amongst that lot, Ravaglia and Bartels. And there, Bartels challenging uh, Bergstahler. And uh, smoke coming out of the back of that one particular Audi. That doesn't look too promising at all. But here at the bus shop, Chicane. Here's uh, Bieler who misses the tyres this time. And uh, Bieler has uh, Capello behind him now. Dindo Capello at the back of that group with the uh, pink strip across the windscreen. There is Capello. And there's the pit sod signal for Johnny Chicotto. You're in the lead by 1.9 seconds and 3.8 seconds uh, ahead of the uh, championship leader, I would think. Pit board still being used, even in Grand Prix racing, despite the radio communications uh, from pits to car. It's a nice backup, and uh, there's never been any question of not using the old-fashioned pit board, which hasn't changed that much in the last 15 or 20 years. But as you see, still a very tight field here. And uh, Michael Bartel seems to be the one that's uh, on a bit of a charge. Michael Bartels. Uh, Girlfriend of Steffi Graf, who obviously was, was uh, in a big contest uh, yesterday. And I suspect that Michael's been on the phone uh, to talk about uh, all the happenings at Flushing Mellow. And still that, uh, that Audi of Bieler pushing out smoke. That is very worrying indeed. Well, maybe we're seeing Frank Bieler's uh, championship chances going away, although he does pass then. Made a passing manoeuvre very successfully on Michael Bartels. But just look at that smoke. It's not coming from the exhaust. It's coming 
Well, it may be from uh, a tyre, it may be from the underside of the car, and off goes uh, one Audi, and that is Hans Stuck. And Stuck uh, regaining the circuit. Just see how much traction he's got there on the grass with four-wheel drive. And another BMW goes off. Just trying to see which one of that the BMWs that was. I think it's suspicion it was Chicotto. They all look the same, these BMWs. Oh, there is, uh, in fact, Chicotto in the lead. So which one was that? Well, we'll have to wait and find out for a moment. So lots of action here at Spa, and uh, benefiting from that, definitely Michael Bartels. Now uh, here is Hans Stuck. Stuck uh, can't quite see why he ran off the circuit there, just lost his line perhaps into the grapple. And with four-wheel drive, managing to keep it going, and perhaps with a two-wheel drive car, he might have got stuck, but no. Hans keeps the power in, gravel flying everywhere. He'll hear all that in the cockpit. Now onto the grass, where he reckons he can get some better traction, because he's collected it all up at this point, and then back onto the racetrack. But that is dropped, Hans stuck back to 12. And uh, Patrick uh, Bernhardt in his uh, Audi, he uh, walks away, and that engine has definitely blown up. So a bit of a question mark over the uh, four-cylinder Audi units. Uh, Johnny Chicotto swings it through these corners, using every bit of the road, and a little bit more. And this race now coming down to a battle between Johnny Chicotto and Emanuele Pirro, with Chicotto very much uh, in the uh, driving seat at this time. Here is Alfred Hager, who is now third. Alex Bergstahler is in fourth place. And I think I have now worked out that uh, Roberto Ravaglia was the man that had that moment. But uh, as I said, these BMWs all have the same markings on them, uh, the same overall colour scheme with the chequered flag at the back, and just small markings on the mirrors. And uh, to uh, be eagle-eyed to catch out which markings are which. So there the gap shown on the caption between uh, Chicotto in the lead and Pirro in second place. And it's widening all the time now to 3.8 seconds. In the Audi pits, they're uh, obviously concerned. The championship leader, Frank Bieler, has uh, regained fifth spot. But he won't be very happy with that. And it does look as if this series will definitely go down to the wire in two weeks' time at the Nürburgring. Into the bus stop chicane again. That is Alfred Hager. See the green markings on the car, his uh, personal sponsor. Hager, I must say, has been having a superb season. And a very popular man with the press, always very helpful. And then there's Bergstahler, the youngster who won the Spa 24 hours with Roberto Rivaglia. And uh, Thierry Tassin, who uh, has been racing here earlier today in another BMW in the Belgian Pro Car Series, a race in which uh, he won, leading home his uh, teammate, Mark Duez. And the BMW is now running absolutely side by side and uh, Bergstahler with perhaps a little more horsepower. Bern Hager, Hager on the left. And uh, Bergstahler way out there and going the long way round and indeed moving up a spot. So Bergstahler it is now in third place. And uh, those two men, Frank Beeler, would uh, dearly love to get by. And uh, there you see uh, all locked up, Hans Stuck, car number 44. And Hans, uh, after all those problems and the heartache he must have been through over the previous week, says he can completely concentrate on the racing, but, uh, well, we have seen him make a couple of mistakes. The uh, great uh, Le Mans veteran, man who raced in Formula One, of course, uh, with Brabham and with uh, also with uh, March. And 
there's the famous crash helmet of the blue with the white stars around them but uh, Frank Vila there and there we have uh, BMW's team management to, with Mark Sura and the sponsorship manager and the PR manager all watching the screen together BMW of course sponsored by FINA the Belgian based fuel company and they support BMW all around the world. Well, Johnny Chicotto, the former motorcycle world champion in the 350 class, also won the uh, Formula 750 category at World Championship level back in the 70s. Great friend of Barry Sheen's, of course, guy that came over as a little more than a teenager and won the 350 title in his very first year on a Yamaha. Sponsored for many years by Andreas Ippolito, the Venezuelan importer of Yamaha's Johnny of course from Venezuela now lives in the Treviso area of Italy and that Audi meanwhile continuing with the smoke coming off it and uh, well that must worry Frank Vila but at least the car seems to be continuing at, at unabated pace there in fifth spot just to remind you in that uh, First lap incident, uh, Thierry Bootsen and Peter Cox were eliminated. And uh, Thierry Bootsen's teammate, Marcus Osterreich, we have not seen much of the former truck racer so far in this coverage because he is back in 10th place. Pirro there, lying second. Emanuele Pirro, who has a long tradition of touring car racing, the great majority of it, we have to say, actually in BMWs. Piro finishing fourth last weekend at Enna. So this, the ninth lap they're working with the order, Johnny Chicotto, Emanuele Piro, Alex Bergstahl in third place, Alfred Hager is fourth, and the championship leader, Frank Vila, is only in fifth spot. Calling it the German Touring Car Cup isn't exactly accurate. It's getting quite close to being a, a European Touring Car Cup. But with the red mirrors, it is Johnny Chicotto, the camera foreshortening his lead over Emanuele Pirro, and indeed Pirro's lead over Alex Bergstahler. Then it's Alfred Hager. And then there, the smoky Frank Vila. And it does seem to me that that smoke is getting a little worse. I wish I could see exactly where it was coming from. It's possibly from some kind of engine or gearbox leak with the oil going onto the exhaust. Difficult to tell. I'm sure the Audi technicians are also uh, watching that and uh, they'll have a, a reasonable idea of what the problem is, but it certainly isn't hampering Beeler's speed by that amount. And of course, Beeler will need to get the points. If it's a very serious oil leak, well, they're going to tell Beeler, just stay out there and hope it doesn't blow up because you need the points. And it is getting worse. It is definitely getting worse. And I would say that the chances of Frank Beeler finishing this 14-lap uh, race are pretty slim now, but he will just keep going and sometimes Mechanical things are absolutely marvellous and they just hang on when they really shouldn't. So let's just wait and uh, see what happens in that particular situation. But from very early on in the race, it's been Johnny Chicotto and now Emanuele Pirro is uh, really getting pushed by Alex Bergstahler. Bergstahler tries to the inside and Bergstahler goes through and uh, Pirro's off on the grass. There are flames from under the car as he grounds it on the curbing. And BMW now first and second. Pirro is third. Good racing here at the uh, German Touring Car Cup. Great contest between BMW and Audi. So, young Alex Bergstahler, hard charging racer, still a lot to prove in his career. And there is Alfred Hager. Hager on different tyres to the other two BMWs in front of him. That could be a factor later in the race. Hager running on the Dunlops. 
as indeed are the Audis, but Johnny Chicotto and Alex Bergstahler in the uh, factory BMWs there on Michelin. Yokohama, who play a very big part in the touring car uh, series around the world, are not represented here. Uh, Ravaglia telling me he had thought of running on the Yokos here, but uh, decided against it. And still this uh, battle continuing, and Alfred Hager now moving up, and Hager in front of Pirro, and Pirro will almost certainly be instructed to wave past Frank Bieler. It's that time in the season when team orders really do matter, when championships are at stake, and championships are what major motor manufacturers like to advertise and these campaigns here costing these manufacturers a great deal of money but it really does look as if this series will go to the final round at the Nürburgring in two weeks time Chicotto now with an eight second lead over teammate Alec Bergstahler and there is Bieler well it is still going lots of smoke and the smoke is of course burned oil and when all the oil is gone there is only one thing that can happen to the engine and that is it finishes up a load of molten mess probably with a lot of broken pieces well let's hope that that doesn't happen here because Frank Beeler has unquestionably been one of the stars of the series he dominated uh, the early races Winning, of course, at Arvis and then at uh, Wunstorp, just uh, walking away with those races. But subsequently, after the rules were changed, still an excellent win at Zandvoort, too. So that smoke still billows as they come into the bus stop chicane, where it's so easy to make a mistake hop over the curbs or even miss the chicane and up then towards the famous Lassos hairpin there you see Chicotto crossing the start finish line Chicotto going onto what the screen tells me is the last lap and you can just see that big lead that Chicotto has and there coming into view Berkstahler and then Hager and then the two Audis and it does look as if Fila has gone indeed he goes ahead of Pirro no resistance from Pirro and that will help uh, him in the point standings. Eight points for fourth place is about all he's going to get. And for a win for Chicotto, there's 20, so that will really reduce the margin by a considerable amount. In fact, they could be very close to on the same score after this round. We'll obviously do the sums as the race uh, finishes. But uh, superb drive by Johnny Chicotto, guy who could have done so well in Grand Prix racing, but of course had that terrible crash at Brands Hatch, which damaged his legs. Racing uh, for Tolman. And as we watch this uh, closing stage of the race, I'm just quickly trying to work out the uh, possible combinations here. And in fact, I think uh, we could uh, still have Vila in the lead of the series by some in the region of uh, eight or nine points. But nevertheless, this race has been all about Johnny Chicotto. Chicotto in the superbly prepared Vorsteiner sponsored Michelin tired BMW. 
checkered flag awaits and Johnny Chicotto is the winner Mark Sura has a broad smile on his face as, as do the other team personnel and coming to the line and making it a BMW 1-2 and in fact Alfred Hager just slipped past uh, Bergstahler so big surprise good drive by Alfred Hager Beeler just makes it and uh, following Beeler home uh, Piro and the rest of the boys there you see the Nissans and Fords coming through and uh, the result Johnny Chicotto the overall winner Alfred Hager second Alex Bergstahler is third Frank Beeler fourth Emanuele Piro is in fifth spot then another Audi of Dindo Capello, Michael Bartels finishing seventh, Roberto Ravaglia brought in to uh, help Johnny Chicotto finishing down in eighth place, uh, Van Capelli, we saw little of him finishing ninth, and Marcus Osterreich tenth. And, well, you can see climbing immediately out of that uh, damaged Audi. So, obviously,